that's just the nature. I mean, and that's just the way of the modern world anymore. It's hard, you know, it's, we don't have continuous formation. Mm-hmm. You know, um, many people don't have good Catholic schools they can send their kids to, or you know, we're homeschoolers precisely because we're trying to keep at least some idea of formation without being too insular. You know, the, the mainstream of um, education institutions that are secular are, are deeply problematic coming from, you know, and I'm not, I grew up in that world, so I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't cast total aspersions on it, but it gives a worldview quite at odds in its implicit kind of warp and woof. You know, even if it was the best of worlds, you know, let's imagine a, a not anti-religious school in Northern Virginia. You would be in, you'd be in an environment that encourages you that one of the first things that are most important is to try to do as well as you can so that you can get to an Ivy League school or a immediately under that level school, mm-hmm. as though that's the great, like, get ahead. Uh, getting ahead is like the the kind of anthropology of of the day. Social and material so to, ambition. Yeah, exactly. Or so economic. Or, yeah. Yep. And so you're working against these currents, um, and we have the benefit of at least knowing. <laughs> we're not even accepted. We're not understood by our Latin brethren. So, you know, we're not even thought of very often. Um, and so we have the benefit of, of sort of having to, to say, okay, we have an identity crisis. At least work through it. I think that this question of identity is very important. Um, and it's why we have so many reactions in our politics today. And I'm not really trying to go into, sure, you sure. know, I'm not trying to jump politically, but this is why you have kind of the same kind of spasmodic things going on politically is precisely for this reason, too. People are looking for identity, and you're just kind of grasping to, to various things um, across the spectrum, actually. So that's my, my answer. Um, and so the, like the cl- clown, I mean, I feel sort of the same echo of that. Right. That's and that sort of becomes part of the project is, is, you know, we're actually facing something that is a really important question salvifically and just for good human flourishing um, that others too face. Um, that, that is such a Marshner yeah. quote right there. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> that is such a William Marshner line if I have ever well, heard one. Good well, human flourishing. <laughs> So that's, I feel not not in bad uh, condition. You know, my first my firstborn is named after Cat, Cardinal Cajetan, oh. uh, Josephine Gitan, and he's doing that work on the Cajetan translation whenever it's going to come out. So, uh, Doctor Marshall, you know, how are you Marshall. doing? I flourish. I flourish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show. Now, I will I will have to have you back on to go through a little bit of your you know your moral uh, theology and your teaching and and some other interesting stuff as well, but. I, I know you've been on uh, Matt Frad's, uh, you know, Pints with Aquinas and, and a few other shows, but I wanted to kind of have you on to tell a little bit more of the personal side and the the humorous side that uh, that goes on in the walls of academia uh, that yeah. does not convey through a lot of very heavy, you know, academic debates on YouTube and other platforms and stuff like that. So, um, no, it's been enjoy- enjoyable to share a little bit of what it's like to be a someone who bumbled into the Ruthenian Catholic Church. 